Hi guys and welcome back to my channel where today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five foundations for oily skin. If you're new to my channel and like it even after this video then please hit the button down below and subscribe. There's a little bell next to it as well so hit that button there if you would like to have notifications of when I post more videos. Let's crack on. I'm not going to do these in any order but it kind of isn't an order but a rough order. Yeah. First one I'm going to talk about is MAC. This is MAC Studio Fix Fluid. It's got an SPF of 15. I bought this um, about six months ago, probably just before the summer. The colour of the moment is a little bit too dark for me. It is NW18 because now, as you can see, I'm quite pale because the sun's gone in and it's pissing it down outside. It's a very thick consistency, I find. Might be good if you mix it with a little bit of oil. I have been mixing my foundations when I feel like they're too thick with rosehip oil. Don't forget as well to shake this. It does stay on the back shake well and I have not shaken it a couple of times and I just find that it doesn't go on the same. So make sure that you shake this foundation before applying it. It does feel heavy on the skin. I do find it's a little bit hard to work into my skin with a brush. I prefer to apply this with a beauty blender or a Real Techniques complexion sponge. Coverage wise, I do find it very flawless. I like the way it sits on my skin and it does give me a matte finish. It doesn't feel like it's slipping off my face or anything. So this is one of my top five. Itchy. Moving on to the next foundation. This is L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour. This is not the matte version. Let me get the matte version out. I was gonna get the matte version out, but I can't because it's stuck behind my ring light. But this is not the matte version. So this is in the shade 140 Golden Beige. I love this foundation. I love the way it applies. I love the way it sits on my skin. This is a little bit too dark for my skin at the moment, but if I pop some powder over it, or literally don't bronze at all and just blend it down my neck, I find that it works okay. Or I mix it in with another foundation. I sometimes mix it in with this Revlon Colorstay foundation, and I find that it does the job. I love the way that it sits. I love the finish of it. And I just find for a drugstore foundation, this is always one that I just reach to. I apply it with a brush or a real technique sponge, but I do prefer to sometimes apply it with a brush and then go in and finish it off with um, a sponge. I find that it gets a very nice coverage and it does work for my oily skin. So the next one I'm going on to is this. This has been hyped up quite a bit over the last year. This is the Rimmel London Lasting Finish 25 Hour with Comfort Serum Foundation. This is in the shade 200 Soft Beige. I find that it's got a slightly more pink undertone. It is a full coverage foundation. It feels light on my skin. I really like the way that it sits, the way it blends in, and the way that it covers up my skin. You can make it really full coverage. I like to start off by popping a little bit on and then building up slowly. I do that with all my foundations. Don't think by Getting the best way to cover up your skin and a nice flawless foundation look is by applying like two pumps and going crazy. You need to apply bit by bit. That is how you'll get the best coverage and then you won't look like a cakey mess. They say that this is good for sweat and heat and humidity and things like that. If you're gonna sweat, you're gonna sweat through any foundation. There is no way that you can stop that coming through your skin, but I will say that it doesn't make it look like it's gonna slide off. I think I could probably go to the gym and then see what this looks like afterwards, but I don't wear makeup to the gym. I don't wear foundation to the gym. If I was going to the gym, I do take it off, but some girls like to keep it on and I'm assuming that this would work well for them as well. So this is one of my other foundations that I like. Moving on to the last two, I'm going to to talk about Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I have had this for nearly a year now and I've still got plenty in it. It comes in a glass bottle, it looks very pretty and it has an SPF of 10. My number one issue with this is that it is extremely thick and heavy on my skin. I honestly feel like I'm wearing a ton of makeup when I have this on, but I love it. So I decided to mix it with some oil. Like I mentioned before, I decided to mix it with a little bit of oil and I find that it goes on so much better. I use bio oil or rosehip oil. I like both of them and both of them work exactly the same for me. I put this onto the back of my hand. I pop in a couple of drops. I mix it up with kind of a spatula or if I'm lazy, just the end of a makeup brush and then I apply it on my face with a beauty blender or a Real Techniques complexion sponge. Splunge? 
sponge. I wouldn't apply this with a brush. It's just far too thick. One of my tips for this as well is not to put dots of this all over your face or put it all over your face to then blend it in. I would do section by section. It dries quite quickly, I find. So it is a thick foundation, but it is matte and it lasts. This is more of my evening foundation, my party safe foundation. I had this popped on my skin for my wedding. Literally, it looked flawless and amazing all night and I didn't go greasy or anything like that. This would be, if I had to say, one of my holy grails, but it's not something holy grail wise that I would wear every single day. This is a special occasion for me, but it is in my top five. A lot of people say that this gives flashback. I haven't really experienced it with this before. I wore this on my wedding and I didn't have any flashback from any of the photos, so it was absolutely fine. But I do not set this with a powder, just some finishing spray. So the last one that I'm gonna talk about and I would say is top of the list. It's my go-to, but I haven't worn it for quite a few months because the color is too light. This is the Revlon Color Stay. Oh, it says 24 hours. I'm not sure about that, but this is just so good for my oily skin. This is in the shade 180 Sand Beige. It's got an SPF of 15 and it is matte. It is thick, but it feels light on the skin. It covers up all my imperfections. I tend to apply with a brush and then go in afterwards with a beauty blender. It leaves a beautiful matte finish. A lot say that this is the dupe for this but I do prefer the Revlon. It's around 12 euros a bottle compared to this being like 35 euros a bottle. So if you're looking for a dupe or you don't have the money to buy the Estee Lauder, then I'll definitely try the Revlon. Now, because I'm oily doesn't mean that I don't moisturize. I have been using oils for my skin the last couple of months and they are working so well. I've been using the rosehip oil during the day because it's more of a dry oil and over night time I'm coating my face either in bio oil or I'm popping this on but a lot more of it. So make sure that you moisturize your face before using any of these foundations. Also make sure that you are applying a primer. I do especially think with the Estee Lauder double wear foundation that you should be wearing a primer just so it glides on your skin a lot easier. This can make my pores look slightly bigger but that doesn't bother me too much. I'm not too worried about that unless you are like this close and then I find that that's a bit of an issue. I can't really 100% decide which one of those is my all time favorite because my skin changes a lot. I'm oily combi, so it's difficult to be able to go, this is my favorite one, but it might be a different one for you. Everyone's skin is different, but these I find are the foundations that I always go to. So yeah so guys i hope you liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already hit that button down below and subscribe i'll see you guys soon bye